good to be here. That has nothing to do with the fact that it's snowing in Winnipeg, where I live right now. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the fact that it's cold in Winnipeg right now, and that this is San Diego, and it's warm and beautiful and lovely. No, I'm, I'm really just glad to be here. And I'm glad to have a chance to talk to you and tell you something about some of the kinds of, of management things that, that I've been doing in my businesses and, and so much of it that I, I learned from my, my friend and mentor, Ken Blanchard. When I first started to get involved in business, I was sure that there were a number of success drivers. There was having a good plant and great equipment. There was having good raw materials coming in and all those kinds of things. And as I've become more experienced in business, I've come to the conclusion that there is just one success driver. That's people. Not just people, but gung-ho people. People who are excited and turned on and, and dynamic and, and just can't wait to get in to work and do a job. And I'm also convinced that if we're going to be successful in business in the coming decades, that we have to have more gung-ho people in our operations than ever before. That we have to put together a whole band of eagles. People know this. We advertise for eagles. We interview for eagles. We hire eagles. Six months later, we sort of find out we've got a turkey. <laughs> Best-selling author, entrepreneur, and captivating speaker. Sheldon's thoughtful message of creating raving fan customers and an energized, motivated workforce is based on his best-selling books, Raving Fans and Gung Ho, that he co-authored with Dr. Ken Blanchard. Many organizations throughout the world benefit from his presentations that are delivered from a practitioner's perspective, gained from years of experience working in various industries. His real-world information is spiced with wit, wisdom, and humor that make it easy for audiences to understand and simple to implement back on the job. The great Canadian philosopher and, and thinker and, and writer G. Ross Lawford reminded me recently of the, the old legend about the young boy in the forest who, walking through the forest, finds an egg. And he reaches down and he picks it up. It's a rather large egg. And he looks around. He looks up in the trees. And he sees a, an eagle's nest away up in the top of branches of a tree. But it's too dangerous. It's too high for him to go up there. And looking around, he sees a nest of wild turkeys. He goes over. The mother turkey squawks off the nest, goes off to the side. Boy puts the leg, egg down, backs up a bit. Sure enough, mother turkey comes back, checks over the eggs. Things look fine to her. I guess she doesn't count so well. And <laughs> plops down on the nest. A little while later, the story goes that the mother turkey hatches three beautiful baby turkeys and one baby eagle, who looks a little strange in the nest. Father turkey takes over the job of teaching them how to be a good turkey. And he explains to the kids, our job as turkeys is to go around and scratch and peck and scratch and peck and scratch and peck. They say, is that it, Dad? Yeah, that's it. You've just got to get good at scratching and pecking. And one day the baby eagle, who's really working to be a good turkey, looks up in the sky and he sees this bird flying away up there. And he says to his dad, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I wish I could soar like that. The father says, now look, son, that's an eagle. We're turkeys. We don't do that. We can't do that. Our job is pecking and scratching pecking and scratching, and that's what we need to, to practice doing. Just put all thought out of your mind of ever doing that. If you need to, maybe we can flutter three or four feet, but that's it. <laughs> but isn't that what happens in our companies? I know it's what happens in the companies that I'm associated with all too often, that we set these rules and regulations around people as to what they can and they can't do, what they're authorized to do, what they're not authorized to do, where they're allowed to use their brains and where they're not allowed to use their brains. And we create the turkeys. And it, it, there, there is some hope in it, though, because if you look at those turkeys, you'll find out that so often outside of business hours, 
you'll find some eagle behaviors. Yeah, they're, 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 they're running for, for office in, in the, the town or the community to be town councilors. They're, they're involved in rotary. They're involved in Little League. They're involved in the antique and classic car club. They're, they're out there and they're doing things. And the question is as to how we can get that kind of eagle behavior happening back at work again. And I think what we need to do is we need to create the same kinds of conditions at work that allow them to be eagles at work, that allow them to be eagles.